black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. Today's video is all about this right here, the triangle grilled cheese sandwich maker. Me and my buddy were hanging out the other day and we started talking about panini presses and then this arose, which isn't quite a panini press, but I remember it from back in my childhood where you get the crimped pressed edges and the pockets of goodness. So I went out and I bought this. It was $15, very good deal. Master Chef hooking it up. I'm gonna put it to the test. I got this really soft bread from the other day from the tuna sandwiches. These we'll talk about later. I got some cheddar slices. I got some beef prepared uh, roast brisket type thing. And we're gonna make pockets of goodness with the pocket of goodness maker that I recall from being seven years old. Okay. All right, we've unboxed and unveiled the Master Chef bad boy. I just wanna have a look at it. Pretty simple tool. Surface is nice. Definitely gonna have to oil or spray it up, but we're gonna get these, these beautiful imprints and the crust ends up there, but we gotta prep a little bit to make it so we get the desired result that we want. All right, I got a little aggressive on the first square cut, but we're keeping this much crust and then a little bit off the top and the side. And this is what I'm saying. We gotta get that perfect fitting, right? So it doesn't spill out the sides. We get that perfect sandwich. All right, doing a light little sauteed onion for these guys. I like a little onion with my short ribish type beef. Don't you? A little salt to draw some moisture out of the onion. All right, a little bit of lightly sauteed, lightly caramelized onion. Okay, great company. It's called Lou's, L-O-U apostrophe S. Pre-cooked meats. This is beef, like short rib almost. And they are amazing, to be honest with you. Break this guy down. Look at that. Pre-packaged, pre-cooked but beautiful. So we've got our pre-cooked packaged beef kind of all chunked and shredded out. And we're just gonna bring it together with some real cheese. Mm -hmm. Oh, Christmas tree. <laughs> Why am I singing that? It's Halloween. That's gonna be really nice inside of a nice crispy toasted pocket of sandwich bread. All right, let's get our squares laid here. Our building station. A cheese slice on each. All right, I've chopped up this beef all real nice in the pan. And we need to get our filling here centralized in the center because we do want to leave like a half inch on the outside to get that crispy edge on the uh, pressed sandwich, right? I know it kind of looks like dog food, but I promise you it tastes way better than such. Okay, we're gonna put in a little more real cheese on top of each one as well. More of that shred ched coming here and we close the case. All right, I'm gonna lightly oil these inserts as prep so we get a good crisp. We don't get stuck. It's a, uh, a good move, a smart move just to get some oil in here. All right, here we go, moment of truth. See how these come out. See if they come out real nice or if they're terrible. <laughs> Two at a time, perfect fit. And we press. And we close the hatch. Two to four minutes, they say. All right, I'm three minutes in. I got some cheese leaking here out the side. <laughs> this could get crazy. Let's see what we're doing here. All right, they look pretty good. They just need longer, but we definitely have some cheese seepage issues. So the pockets aren't completely tight, but whatever. Looking good. All right. I think they're crispy enough. It's kind of perfect for me. I have no idea how I'm gonna get these out of here. So we bring in the thin old handy dandy fish spatula and try to get them to release and not be a complete and total mess. They wanna to come together for whatever reason. They are fused and bonded now. <laughs> But uh, they do look good, I'm not gonna lie. Pockets, we got exactly what we wanted. That's why we had to take the, cr the crust off, right? This is where it's at. That crunch, that crisp, unreal. This is the leaky side. All right, third one's coming out, stacking up, and then we got, why not? We got this little cheese, this little grilled cheese chunk in there. Probably will be delicious. But here we are. 
A little bit of an explosion on this side. It's kind of wet, it's not crisp together, but these ones are sealed, signed, and delivered to my gut pretty soon. We also have our ancho chipotle sauces to dip in, which we'll talk about when we eat, which is now. All right, so 90s grilled cheesers. Do you have these? Does anybody still have these and make these? I don't know. It's crazy. Well, I just remember them from being a kid. Haven't seen or made one of these like in years and years and years and years. I felt I had to do it with this ancho chipotle sauce that I marched my ass down to Tim Hortons. They sell it. They make it. They put it on their, uh, it's like the farmer's breakfast burrito thing. It's so good. You can't find something like it anywhere else. And uh, I got them to charge me just for four sides of it, four ramekins, which was $2. So not bad. Mm hmm. Tastes amazing together. What I'm immediately noticing is. The cheese slice has leaked all, all out. I don't know how you'd fix that. Because that's supposed to keep it sealed in. But this part of these sandwiches is so good it kind of it's like the bottom of the uh the the drumstick cone when you get the little piece of chocolate but it's the crisp on here this point specifically so good it's like firm but crispy I don't know how this is gonna, if it's gonna rip very well. They're as delicious as I remember. I just wish that uh, it would have been able to hold in and maintain more cheese. I even had the idea of uh, putting cheese on the outside of it and then pressing it back down and having like a crispy cheesy outside as well. Can't have a grilled cheese without ketchup either. I want to see how this, how this translates. I'm one of those people who I like ketchup with my steak, my roast. This one's got the pepper in it. Both sauces. Very good. They both work in their own way. But this chipotle sauce is some sort of special. I'll tell you what. I found it before. Something like it uh, at the Toronto Blue Jays games when I worked there. They had sweet potato fries with this chipotle and like. I was addicted to it, but so it's definitely bought in bulk. Probably some massive brand for, for like chain restaurants and shit. I just don't know where to find it in my real life, you know? So if anybody knows where to get like a, the, you know, the Chipotle flavor I'm talking about, it's just, it's special. I don't know how to explain it otherwise. Cause I've had a ton of 
Chipotle mayo is like Hellman's and all this stuff, and they just never taste like this. I don't know. Hard to say if this is a yay or nay way to grill che, you know? Because, like, evidently the che doesn't stay in. But maybe if I had less fillings involved, if it was just cheese, it would crimp up and seal perfectly. And we'd have no issue. So I might need to make some straight grilled cheese in here, but the press itself Seems like a bit of an, an annoying clean. If I'm honest. But. It allows you to achieve a. A texture that just can't otherwise be achieved. So there's a trade off there. But I kind of see why maybe there's a novelty to it and then it ended up relegated to the appliance drawer, uh, the, 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 the appliance graveyard, if you will. We all have them in our house. You buy some nifty do gadget and you think it's going to be life changing only to realize not the classic method, just a pan and a spatula. This is easier, better, more effective. And then your favorite new toy ends up being a dust collector. But I think it's a, a nice thing to have if, you know, quarterly, every couple months, you desire a certain style of toast on the bread. Maybe you bust it out for old time's sake every once in a while. Hardly a daily use tool, I think. So for me, this was all about nostalgia and testing to see if it's something that I would love to use on the regular. I think we've decided that it's probably not, but it was worth the adventure. And uh, I just wonder if there's any of you out there who use, it, use these all the time, never seen one before, you know what I mean? Have one, don't have one type thing. So. I'm currently hot as balls. Somebody tell me where to get this like off the shelf because I want some to have in my house all the time and eat good, live well, and stay true. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.